met a minority leader. What's your step forward? You don't control the House, Senate, or the governor's office. What do you hope to accomplish? You know, the things that we're looking at are the things that we campaigned on and the DFL also did. That tax relief for Minnesotans, public safety, ending fraud within our agencies and within our state, and making things better for Minnesota, both um, for families and for, for businesses, and making this a place that people want to choose to be. How do you do it if you don't have control? Relationships, without without question, definitely relationships. Um, as as I was able to take over as minority leader, that's a priority for me. It's something that has worked well in life, in business, and in family. And so I believe that we need to definitely um, build relationships. And that's within our committees, um, across the aisle, with each other, and then have those conversations. Does it make you feel optimistic when you hear more than you speak on? You know, I, I believe that we can work together, and Minnesotans are actually looking for that right now. They are looking to have their values represented, not by necessarily the political party, but definitely the things that are important to Minnesota. That's what we're here to do. I will always have hope. I will always have optimism. Um, and it takes a lot of hard work and having hard conversations, and when we disagree, doing it um, in a respectful way. How different did today feel in person? Tons of new members. Thank you for asking that. You know, over the last three years, as we faced things with the pandemic, I remember in 21 being sworn in, and I was in my office. We allowed new members here. Family couldn't really be here. To walk into this chamber and watch it fill with people was amazing. This is how we build relationships. This is how we legislate. And I look forward to the work coming ahead for the next two years. What is your talk to stand on recreational marijuana? We're going to have continued conversations on recreational marijuana. Right now, people are worried about taxes, affordability to be able to live here, and public safety. Madam Leader, one of the first things they're going to, uh, that the other caucus is going to try to move through is the abortion modification will be waived. How do you stop that? You know, we are a pro-life caucus, and we are very proud of that, but we need to have conversations. I do know that Minnesotans are not extreme. Abortion should not be legal up to the mo moment of birth, and so there's conversations and work that we will be doing together and having those conversations. Do you think they say that they have caucus unity, uh, as do the uh, Democrats in the Senate? Uh, do, you, do you agree with that, or? unity. It's something that we all hope for, but it really comes down to committees and when we take the vote on bills. And so we'll see how much unity there is on all of the topics at hand. They're, talk they're talking about doing a tax conformity bill in the next week. Is that something that you're going to let go clean or are you going to try to attach Social Security exclusion onto that? You know, tax conformity is something that has been bipartisan in the past and we need to get that done. We will look at that language as it comes forward. What about Social Security? Are you still going to push for that? Social Security, we need to have that ended the tax on Social Security um, across the board all the way, and that is something that was campaigned on by both sides. We look forward to that continuing. we got to get her going. Thanks.